One day, a professional killer went home to visit his family and found his brother murdered. Now, who killed him? I don't know nothing. But listen, the only reason I came back to this crap house was to find out who did it. And I'm not leaving till I do. Michael Caine is Carter, a man with unbridled hate. Do you want to be dead, Albert? For Christ's sake! You knew what I'd do, didn't you, Albert? Listen, Grant, I didn't kill him. I know you didn't. When a professional killer hates, he turns animal. And there becomes but one law in the underworld jungle. Get Carter. Get Carter. Before Carter gets you. Don't let us interrupt you. Now. Don't you think you ought to get dressed first? Come on, Jack, put it away. You know you won't use it. <laughs> the gun he needs. <laughs> Out. Carter, the heated killer. The cool lover. Carter, a man of few words. A man of decisive action. I've come for you, Margaret. Take your clothes off. Few words. Decisive action. <laughs> Hate drives the hunter. No, no! Fear pursues the hunted. They have killed me! They killed my brother! He's dead! Hey! <laughs> Carter, spreading terror with an uncontrolled trigger. Carter was a killer by profession. Now he is a killer by instinct. Michael Caine is Carter. Get Carter before Carter gets you. All right. Uh, well, then let's go. Welcome to Movie the Podcast. That's right, Movie the Podcast. It is the third week of Michael Kine, and we watched my pick, uh, Get Carter. Uh, I wish I had got something else. All the boys are here, virtually. Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, still on top this month. I yeah. got to remember what I gave that one, but you might be right. This is, is shaping up to be, like, one of our worst months. Which is shocking, because I thought Michael yeah. Caine was a good actor. But anyway. He is uh, a good actor. Like, good actors are in bad movies. It happens. He's a lot of them, though. Movies, though. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, here we are. Yep, here we are. Uh, what did you all watch this week? Uh, uh, Sean. I watched a bunch of shit. I was on vacation. Bunch of shit. I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. I watched Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the best of the three Mortal Kombat movies, maybe. Wow. <laughs> it's it's terrible, but, like, it's really earnest, which I appreciate. You know what I mean? Like, nobody's phoning anything in. Like, the guy uh, that plays Shao Kahn, I, I, I text everybody or just TJ. That he was the, the gay helicopter pilot from Miracle Mile. Yeah, he's got he's got a big giant face. He's been in a bunch of movies. Yeah, like you can tell he thinks this is gonna be like his big break. <laughs> and he's just like going for it, and it is bad. There's two American gladiators with speaking roles in this. Uh, <laughs> Which two? Lesser American gladiator Saber plays Jax, and uh only on twelve episodes, surprisingly, American Gladiator Malibu plays Mataro. Oh shit. <laughs> they wow. crammed Every bit of Mortal Kombat lore up to this point in this movie, it is fucking insane. James like, Rebar part- stunt cast as a Raiden always seems like a yeah. I don't know what kind of stunt cast that would be, but it was just like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, like who do we get that's Lamb is is James Remar Lambert adjacent? Like, would you describe James Remar as like a poor man's? Christopher Lambert, because that doesn't link up for me. All I know is that you, you know you're in trouble when Christopher Lambert is like, yeah, I'm not coming back. I'm this. out. <laughs> that motherfucker no, was in Beowulf. You, know, you, see, you ever seen that? It's like a yeah. sci-fi reimagined. The animated one? No. There's oh, like a, okay. 
it's like a late 90s, early 2000s direct to video, like sci fi retelling of the Beowulf Ooh. story. It's fucking horrendous. <laughs> no, but thanks. I'm good. Um, I was telling DJ, like, I hope these guys got paid by the word because it is like, got this script's got to be 700 pages. It's got to be like the uh, spec script for Jupiter Ascending. <laughs> I don't think. Like, when they fight, they fight. It's great. But, man, just, like, everybody has to exploit. Because, again, they crammed all the lore in there. So they have to explain everything. Because none of that shit's in the first movie or very little of it. No. Um, they travel through the, the core of Outworld and fucking atmosphere balls. It's The movie's insane. And it's, like, it's like intensely watchable. But, I mean, you know, it's not good. But it's not um, boring. No, not at all. I watched uh, Crime of the Century. The two-part op- uh, opioid documentary on HBO. Oh, is that good? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I really do want to watch that. It's really good. Uh, I don't want to spoil any of it. America sucks. Opioids and, <laughs> Um, Like, I, did, I, I, can you spoil a documentary? There's like a minor thing in it, but like... I don't think so. No. Um, they, they show some of their training videos, and they're like all those training videos we used to get when we worked at like restaurants or whatever where they had raps in it, but this rap's about convincing doctors to give people narcotic drugs. Uh, wait, wait, so wait, what's the gist of the what's the gist of the, the, the documentary? Oh, like are you familiar with the Purdue Pharmaceutical Company and the Sackler family? I am actually not. No. Okay. Um Oh boy, you are in for it. You is it are just, is it, it like is it just a story about like were they were they pushing like like uh like Oxycontin and stuff, and that's how yeah, we got they, here? they were telling people it wasn't addictive. Yeah. Because it was, like, oh. time released. Oh! And, of course, they knew about it, and it was just, like, just every kind of, like, corporate scumbag shit you could think of. It's like that, uh, have you ever seen Enron, the smartest guys in the room? Yeah. It's akin to that sort of thing, but instead of people just losing their retirements and homes, they're, like, dying brutally. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a strong recommend. I'll check this out. I watched Police Story, the Jackie Chan uh, classic, I would say. Yeah, I love that movie. That's one, of the, that's one of the best Jackie Chan movies. Got I it. remember when we watched Police Story 6 for the show. I've never seen Police Story. We watched Police I've never Story seen 6? Any, I've never seen any Police Story. Really? Oh, never mind. That was a Police Academy joke. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, there is uh-huh. a Police Story 6, so that's I, what threw me off. Oh, yeah. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't I did play a lot of Police game. Quest. If that oh, that oh. game yeah, that game was the, great. The game yeah. that was uh, fucking endorsed by Daryl Gates, the <laughs> guy that had to retire from the LAPD in disgrace after the riots. That's, that's about right, yeah. Uh, there is more action in the first, I don't know, 35 seconds of Police Story than there is in the entire movie we just watched. Mm. And, like... God bless the Jackie Chan stunt because, like, I don't know how any of those guys survived. There's a well, you, including Jackie Chan himself. Yeah. Have you, <laughs> God, you've never seen like the the mall scene at least, like the ending of it. I don't. I may. I maybe if I uh, if I've just seen it as like there, there's it, a, a there's a stunt that's so badass. Jackie Chan does where he slides down this like lighting truss that they show oh, it in the replay so in the yeah. movie. Like, oh, they do a like, dolomite and they're like, let's see that shit again. Yeah. It's yeah, so like good. different angles. It's so uh, fucking good. And Jackie Chan actually fucking did it. Like, it's well, insane. And everything's like, it looks like it's speed rep because they don't, like, a thing I appreciate about Hong Kong movies and, like, uh, Indonesian movies is they don't use slow motion for anything. So it looks really fast when a guy jumps off of, like, you know, a fourth level promenade and lands on an escalator full on shattering his shins. Like,. Yeah. I mean, that movie's worth it just to watch for the outtakes in the credits. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I love that movie. Also, the uh, I feel like the actual movie part, like aside from the action, is pretty entertaining. Like, it's, it's pretty not good. bad. It's pretty it's good. Very, a comedy? It's very no. well, it's, well, it's not a comedy, but it's like silly. There's a lot of like slapstick in it. It's serious, but if you're thinking it's gonna be like a hard boiled. No, I didn't mean that as a pun, no, but no. like a John Woo type, like the killer, even though that's got some slapstick stuff in it. If you're expecting like a real serious, like Infernal Affairs type movie, it's not quite that. Okay. I mean, it's still Jackie Chan. It's, right it's, it's funny to hear him like speak in Chinese and that young, because his voice doesn't sound anything like you're used to hearing his like, okay, Chris Tucker, American voice. Um, 
Yeah, there's a there's a scene or the, the opening where they built a shanty town and they're driving cars full ass like seventy miles an hour through it, just crushing houses. People are landing on the cars. Like I would be shocked if nobody died during the production of this movie. Like that mall scene at the end, they literally like run a guy over with a car. Like it's <laughs> insane. Like it, how that guy survived. Like. It, it's nuts. Like we've all seen, like I don't know, like Blues Brothers comes to mind. They have that scene where they like ran, they drive through, through that the whole mall. shopping center. Yes, but wow. this is like this is this is like people are like the focal point of the scene, and the cars are driving through the fucking. It's insane. Like, Imagine the Blues Brothers scene with no safety regulations whatsoever. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. They shoot a Gonzo, yeah. they just drive a car through the mall. Could have. I'm sure that's what they did. They like. <laughs> There's this stunt where this guy takes a kick and flips and ends up in between escalators, and I don't know oh, how he did that yes. in a single take because the space between the escalators has got to be at the width of a kitchen chair, like an yeah. average chair, maybe. And like he lands like perfectly compressed in there. It's like it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, great, great stuff. Big recommend for Police Story. Police Story Two. It's and on then, uh, and it's on HBO Max. Yeah. Say that. Police Story. Or new police story? Which one's the one with the teenagers or whatever? Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's new police story. That's yeah. Uh, all right, and then they had the one I watched a couple of weeks ago that's just called Police Story. That's Police Story Five. That one wasn't very good. Which one? And then there's Lockdown, which yeah, is like the newest. That's the one movie. after that. I had that one was okay. Yeah, skip Lockdown and just pretend that the Foreigner is the last police story movie. Foreigners. Bangs. The Forner kills. Um, and really what's that? Forner's really good. Yeah. And uh, blah, blah, blah. what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, because it doesn't matter. There's no continuity between the police stories. I think he plays a different character, if I recall correctly. Definitely, at least in the first and second one, he plays a different character. Yeah, I, I don't. don't I, the rest of them. I think. He, yeah, I don't think he plays the same character in any of them. If I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I watched other shit. I've just been playing Mass Effect a lot, uh, but I'll turn my time over to Alec. Oh, 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 oh. Ah. Hey. Oof. So, <laughs> I don't know I watched, why I'm making all these noises, but I like it. I watched two movies. Two mm. movies? I watched the Judd Apatow helmed Pete Davidson semi autographical biopic, The King of Staten Island. Oh, you watched that? Yeah. And? I liked it. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews. I've heard either people love it or they think it's, like, really, really annoying. Isn't it very long? That's what I... Oh, I think it's, like, two hours. I don't know. I don't remember how long it was. It's not very long. So. But I enjoyed it. I, I, uh... Like, Pete Davidson is a bit much most of the time. I I can't stand it. (laughs) Like, that's why I haven't watched it yet. The rest of the supporting cast is really good. So, well, I guess the rest, there's not a lot of other people in it, really. But uh, Bill Burr and Marissa Tomei are both really good. Steve Buscemi's good in it. And Pete Davis is, like, <laughs> like fine. He's, like, just – I don't think he's ever going to be able to be anything that's not annoying. Right, right. Just because he's just, like, an annoying person. Yeah, Overall, yeah, I like it. a good way to put like, it. <laughs> Overall, I liked it, and I mean, for the most part, Judd, Ap- Judd Apatow's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good batting average. I didn't even realize Apatow directed it. I had no idea. Yeah, I thought it was just produced, but he he directed it, and him and Pete Davidson, uh, maybe Adam McKay wrote it. Huh? Yeah, I didn't know that because it's loosely based on a uh, Pete Davidson's uh, childhood. Huh. And kind of growing up, but it was good. I'd recommend it. I think we, we might have seen it. It might have been on HBO on HBO on Max. Yeah, it's maybe. I think it's. I on think that. it might have been one of their uh, one of their exclusives. Maybe it's, it's that or Prime. I see it keeps yeah, showing up on I one of my it, feeds. Yeah, I saw it. Same. I can't remember which one it was either, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd recommend it. I think it's. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Not not outstanding or great, but. I mean, I liked it. Um, the other thing I watched was, and I had to take some umbrage with uh, everybody else here's opinions of it, Uh-oh. was uh, Mortal Kombat. What? Oh, no. You actually what? liked <laughs> it? What? I did not like it. Oh. But you guys oh. are talking about it like it's a real movie. 
Uh, like it's basically like Shark Exorcist. Like it's not a movie. Oh, okay. like it's not directed by anybody. It's not directed by anybody. There's no actors in it. Like it's like an asylum movie. It's a good swerve. Like, you, you just well, it's us. got it's you got can't, actors. You can't, it's got, no, it it's not, yeah, it does. What's his it's name? It's got Shatterstar. It's got the fucking uh, the guy that Sub Zero. That guy's great. Joe what else has he show. done? He's done uh, a bunch the night of comes for us. Yeah, the that's, raid. That's, Fucking like, the, the those swordsman. Are, those aren't real movies. Those are foreign movies. Oh, okay. I, I, just, mm. I feel like uh, it's not a canon episode of movie the podcast. If we don't mention the night comes for us. Like I feel like. Did oh, you just God. fucking review that next week instead <laughs> of fucking another stupid Michael Caine movie? <laughs> <laughs> like it's barely a it's barely a movie. Like. Yeah, I agree with you there. I thought like, I don't. I don't you, you guys are rating it like it's an actual movie. Like I don't know how this got. Like a theatrical release, yeah. Money. How anybody anybody saw it and was like, "Yeah, that's good." It's this doing, is like this is like what I would expect. Really well, too. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump on. This you. is what I would expect if I just randomly saw a Mortal Kombat movie on like Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, oh, they made a Mortal Kombat movie. Let me check it out, and I probably would have been like, oh, "That's all right." Yeah, but yeah. This is like barely a movie. It's like not even. It's not coherent. There's like the acting is horrendous, <laughs> top to bottom. There's barely any fighting. There's barely any fighting. The dude's like metal suit is supposed to be like skin. I don't know. Yeah, we that couldn't make put, any, put that together. That didn't make any sense. I, Alec, I don't want. I don't want to step on you, but real quick, <laughs> um, like I don't think that like. We thought it was like a real movie. We, I think the feeling was they were trying to make a real movie. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. wanted it to be somewhat serious. Yeah. Why did Scorpion say get over here when he couldn't speak any other words of English? <laughs> That's a good point. He learned it through uh, blood osmosis from his like great, 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 uh, great grandson. I know how to but say that. Was, the, but I, those I, are the only three I, words he learned how to well, say. Well, I mean, he only, I, he's only been connected with them for a week. Like, he can only learn but so maybe, many words. Maybe there's some kind of like Japanese version of the deer hunter, because I know how to say uh, let's go in Vietnamese and nothing else. Yeah. All right. Uh, semi, semi related. Uh, I bought Mortal Kombat 11 and it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Love spoilers it. for Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, Jax is ending. He goes back and rewrites the transatlantic slave trade, which is the weirdest thing for white people to write. And I could talk about it forever, but maybe we'll do an after dark <laughs> episode. About we should that. have like a, you and I should have an after dark episode about it. I'd love to talk about it. Yeah. Um, that's all I watched, just the, those two films. Mm. Uh, TJ. Uh, that's me. I watched two things. Uh, two things. Uh, with a little more enthusiasm, please. Come on. Two, two things. things. There we go. Oh. Uh, I watched Spiral from the Book of Saul. That is the full title. Uh, I think they're trying to fight for Batman v Superman <laughs> Dawn of Justice as the worst fucking title ever. Mm. Like, just call it Spiral, or just call it The Book of Saul. Don't call it Spiral from The Book of Saul. Like, that is... Well, now they're, they're gonna try to, like... Oh, it's so bad. Like, what's the, what was the other film series that did that? They're trying to make it, like, a franchise now. Or different... They're gonna have other... Like, The Conjuring from, or something? Yeah, they're gonna have, like, other from The Books of Saul... Oh, or really? Solo. Oh, I don't know. This one definitely ends open ended. Where they, I figured they were going to continue the story of this this jigsaw, just like uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Right? It's a what are they? A, a Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious presents. Furious present. It's a Saw. Hobbs Saw, and Shaw. Sawverse. Uh, wait a minute. You mean Saw. this jigsaw? Is this, a, is this a fresh jigsaw? Yeah, Jigsaw's dead. He's been. This is in the He's same. He's been dead. He's been dead for the last four movies. This is in the same continuity as the other movies. Like this is a continuation, not a reboot. Um. Yeah. So first off, Chris, this, uh, go ahead. Sorry, Chris, no, Chris no. Rock wrote it, didn't he? He has a story by credit. I don't believe he actually wrote the script, but it's it's bad. It's really bad. It's boring. It's like low effort bad. Like it's, and by the time you get to the resolution, it's like, well, I already figured that out like an hour ago. Like it's so obvious who the killer is. And like, uh, the thing that I, I, I really just don't get is that like, I don't really know why you made this movie. Like there's nothing to it that like 
screams, oh, we need another Saw movie. The the plot. It, I mean, but like, it's, is this thing really going to like be like a how, box, box how office? How much did it not? cost? Uh, it, I'll give the movie credit, right? It looks better than all the other Saw movies. Like, it has the veneer of, like, a real movie. It doesn't look cheesy. It doesn't look like... I mean, we we watched a whole mess of those Saw movies. And it doesn't look like a Saw movie. It doesn't look like... It doesn't have that Lionsgate, like, black filter over everything. I think the first <laughs> Saw movie felt like a real movie. It did. That's fair. It um, was the one we liked with uh, where Lincoln Park gets his tits ripped Saw, off. Saw 3D, which yeah. is... Funny because that's the one everybody hates. I think it's hands down the best one. It's not even close. It's like such a cool movie because it's so fucking ridiculous. Um, the but, budget but, for this, the budget for this was twenty mil. I don't yeah, know. What it'll they, make that. Yeah. I don't know what it, they spent. It, it made on. it made twelve already this weekend. Like yeah, yeah well, what the hell? Are, fine. I mean, part of the reason why I went to see, see this is just because I wanted to go see a movie. Like yeah, you know I mean, like just uh, get me in the theater. Also, uh, sidebar, nothing to do with the film. I've run into a new annoying person at the movie theater, something I've never experienced in my entire life. I had a person, like two rows in front of me, had fucking headphones in listening to music the entire movie. The entire cool. fucking movie. And of course he's got cheap-ass headphones, probably fucking Raycons or some shit, so it's all spilling out the back of his ear. I can hear fucking everything. Was oh. it Hans Zimmer and he just wanted to rescore it? I don't know. It was dark, and yeah, it was probably Hans Zimmer at the security mall in in Catonsville. Yeah. Well, shout out Hans Zimmer. Um, but this movie, it's like it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's just so like paint by numbers. Like, also the 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 basic premise of the movie is is that is that uh the new jigsaw just kills corrupt cops, so everybody that dies, you're like good. Even at the <laughs> even the resolution to it, you're like. Okay, good. I'm glad they're all dead. Fuck the cops. I don't care. Like uh, the movie's so tonally weird. It's just like, it, but wasn't it, that it, like the whole like all the uh, like all the later Saw movies? Weren't they all about like scumbags kind of getting their comeuppance? Well, yeah, and it almost it's sort of like it like well, made it, it's, Jigsaw it's, like a weird hero. That's always what. But the didn't Saw it? Movie. But they also like it was like what's it like in uh, Dogma? Like his reasons were like very. Uh, well, Matt Damon's character in Dogma is he keeps killing people for less and less like offensive things. Yeah, uh, I mean, is it kind of like that? Well, like, the, the you, first... you you cut me off in traffic one time, so no, well, now the... I'm going to chop your face off. Well, the first movie sort of starts like that, I think, but then like, the later movies, it's like people that like it's like legit, it becomes less petty and it's more like it's weird. It's I don't more, know. It's like like oh, an it, anti-hero. It's, it's still it's still dumb, and the whole pre- like basically I I made this this joke on my letterbox review, but Chris Rock is a cop that has turned on his fellow cops, like he turned in a crooked cop, and then his whole career has suffered because of it. And the whole movie is about corrupt cops, so it's like Saw Perco is the joke that I made. It's nice. It's it's. it's, it's I was gonna say Chris Rockerco. I mean, I feel like mine works a little better, but it does. Yours was better. <laughs> um, I don't know. This movie, like, again, so you're supposed to sympathize with Chris Rock because he's like the one good cop. But then you're supposed to feel bad when like there's one cop that gets murdered. He's one of the Saul victims. And he literally during a, a traffic stop, he's like, you know, show me your hands. Show me your hands. The guy shows him his hands. He just pulls his gun out and shoots him in the fucking head. Why am I supposed to feel bad for this guy dying? How is this like? There's no and, and what I'm trying to get at is when you do that, you eliminate any tension from the scene. Like you don't care if you like you want him to die, really. I guess like you're trying to to amp the the bloodlust in your audience. I don't know. The movie is very confused. Also, uh, it brings back some t- saw tropes that I hate of the series. Um, now we saw Saw 3D, <laughs> Saw Saw. Uh, when we we watched that movie. They got rid of all that stupid speed editing and all that bullshit. Well, that's back with a vengeance in this. Every time, like, somebody's about to die, it's like, like, oh, God, I fucking hate it. And then they also continue the Saw trope of showing you everything about the movie that's happened. Like, anytime a new piece of, like, plot information is given, there's a flashback to literally three scenes ago. Like, this movie is written for something like my mom, who doesn't pay attention to the fucking movie. And so she can just conveniently pay attention at any point in the movie and be caught up. Like, it was hilarious. Like, 
every time there was something, it was just like, like his partner, uh, his partner gets got right or uh, whatever. I'm not going to go any more into that. I guess if anybody wants to watch it, but his partner gets got and he's like, Oh, my baby, Michael. And they like, they find a body and it's got a tattoo of Michael. And of course they have to like flashback to when he said my baby, Michael, even though that scene literally in like movie time, that scene happened like a minute and a half before that scene. It's like, Jesus Christ. I just saw it. You don't need to show it to me again. Uh, it's, it's trash. It's, it's not worth watching. Did you get any good Chris Rock stand up out of it? No, Chris Rock also has like a lot of weird, it feels like self insert jokes in this. Like he, the whole movie starts out with him say, like in this kind of monologue about how you can't say retard anymore. And it just feels very forced. Also, like there's like a lot of weird ADR in this movie. Like Chris Rock, like it, it's weird, right? Because this movie is filled with like tons of like hit you over the head reincorporation. And, like, Chris Rock cannot stop talking about how his marriage failed, like, for, like, the first, I don't know, half of the movie. So you figure, well, that's going to play a role later on. No, it doesn't. But, like, he will not stop talking about how, like, his wife just fucks everybody and his wife is a whore. And, like, it's it's weird. And like This, this I, is I, a very strange project for Chris Rock, unless he's, like, a just a huge closet saw I don't know. He's not horrible in the movie. It's just not a good movie. But anyway, the other thing I watched is a Korean movie from 2010 called The Man from Nowhere or A Man from Nowhere, maybe. Uh, This movie fucking rocks. This gets the certified banger from TJ Award. I love this movie. It is a stop me if you heard this one is a Korean revenge film. And I fucking loved it. Um, it is a incredible. It's it's the kind of movies that we like the best. It's an action movie filled with fantastic action set pieces with a premise that you could fit in a thimble. Like basically, guy with shady past gets uh, tied up with this little girl who's like his next door neighbor. He runs a pawn shop, and she's like this. She's like this neglected child. Uh, her mother gets the the child's mother gets kind of caught up in this like shady drug underworld. Uh, they both get kidnapped. Enter a uh, guy with shady past decides to just go fucking annihilate this drug family, and it is wonderful. It if, is uh, so if good. Jean Renault had directed this movie, would the kid have gotten fucked by the man? Is it one of those kind of movies? A thousand percent. Uh, <laughs> but Jean Renault. Wait, but we, but we throw in this person. Jean Renault. He means, he means Luke. Luke. Yeah, I meant Luke <laughs> It, this movie is fantastic, though. It's on Prime. I highly recommend it. It's there are so many great like action beats in this movie. Like there is a, a a knife fight in this movie that ends with the one guy like he they're they're battling for position. Like it's the classic like uh, what's that scene in Saving Private Ryan we always reference? Oh, they're, like, the fighting. Mellish scene. Yeah, they're yeah. fighting at the knife in. Well, oh, that imagine is, that oh. scene. But then the one guy, so he can get like he can get more pressure on the guy. He literally like bites into his hand, like a smart play. Chunk, takes a big chunk out of his fucking hand and then just stabs him. It's fucking awesome. And like, oh man, there's so many great like moments in this movie. It's very John Wicky. Like the guy, you know, he's a classic. Like he never really says a whole lot. He has this hilarious like Final Fantasy haircut, like where he's got like. <laughs> of course, this is led by an impossibly handsome Korean man, but like his hair is always over his left eye. Like I can't even do it, but it's like always like this in the whole movie. And I'm like, eh, that's got to be annoying. But then at the end, when he decides to fucking, he ain't taking any shit anymore. He cuts his hair and he looks even more handsome. Like mm. it's it's awesome. I I loved it. Also, I will say that I was really impressed with how they they do flashbacks to the main character's past and why he is the way he is. And even in those scenes that, that generally in movies would be kind of forced because it, it's showing you like how his wife died and all this stuff. Usually that shit in, you know, they, we've seen that in a thousand times in, in movies that we've watched and there's no like emotional resonance. Cause you know, you know, the trope, but like something in this, in this movie, like those scenes like really hit, like, I don't know. They did. They're just, they're just better at making movies than we are. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, also, this lead actor whose name eludes me is amazing. And I was like, why haven't I seen this guy in anything? The dude has been in five movies. And this is the last movie he's been in. And this movie came out in like 2010. Uh, it said in the IMDb bio, he's just like very selective about his roles. He's like, cause I was like, did he die? Cause he's really good in this movie. 
Um, anyway, a man from nowhere. Uh, 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 Gogs and Sean, Alec, you'll probably like it too. You like Koreans. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm married yeah, to one. Intimately. <laughs> that, was the, that was the joke. You and Gogs are stepping all over my joke. Um, but uh, I was saying anything. I think I think uh, I think you you both will love it. I think everybody will love this movie. I thought it was great. There's a there's a little fat you could trim from it. They kind of focus a little too much on the cops that are kind of behind him the whole time. But I really really like this movie. Also, it kind of has the Lord of the Rings. Oh. End. So the cops the cops prop him up so it's like boondock scenes. <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, those uh, Saul, Book of Saul, Spiral of Buttholes, uh, no good, and uh, A Man from Nowhere, very, very good. Uh, so, uh, Gogs. Uh, I only watched, like, I watched, like, a quarter of one thing and half, or maybe I watched a quarter of two things. A quarter, a quarter of two things? That's that's almost half. <laughs> almost half. <laughs> I started watching that synchronic Actually, movie, and then I got tired. A, a quarter of two things is an eighth. Oh, shit. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, yeah. Well, a quarter of a quarter. A, a drug dealer over here. Right, a quarter of a quarter. Right. So, anywho, I watched, well, this is a nice segue. I watched some of that synchronic movie, and then I got sleepy. And then I didn't, I think I was saying it like, I don't know how I was saying it, but I did. You, you, you woke up and watched a different movie? <laughs> well, then, well, no. <laughs> Well, no, I started watching that, and then I, lo- I kind of lost interest. I'll go back to it because I like um, Anthony Mackie. But then once I realized, I thought it was like synchronic, like like we're talking about synchronicity or something. I didn't realize that it was going to be all until I think TJ pointed out there was all you smoke weed, then you go back to Aztec times, and yeah. it's like synchronic. <laughs> and I'm like, mm, that's a little on the nose. Yeah. But so we'll go back to it. Um, I, uh, I bought yeah. two movies by those directors and have not watched either of them. They're both still wrapped. Oh. That one and uh, fuck the endless. endless. The endless. Oof, the endless is so bad. So I mean, maybe so, I, maybe I'm just an asshole. You know what? You I'm know gonna what finish. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish um, uh, synchronic 2000, and then we'll see how no, it goes. I don't think Sean and I have disagreed. What is there a movie that you can think of off the top of your head that we've disagreed on? Uh, the Book of Eli. No, I never liked that movie. <laughs> no, I liked it. Oh, oh, Book of Eli. Why did I thought of? I thought you were for some <laughs> I know you said Book of Eli. I thought you were talking about Book of Henry. <laughs> oh, yeah. You did my favorite movie, Book of Henry, where a uh, autistic kid plots the murder of uh, <laughs> and also plays the stocks. Uh, if, if, you, if you've never seen it, watch the Folding Ideas review of the Book of Henry. It's fucking hysterical. I feel like you guys recently got off uh, out of sync about something that, that I got. You got to get off. I thought it was something that like Sean and I allied on. It was a weird alliance situation, but I have to dig into my I memories. Don't, I don't remember. I don't know. Remember it, that. It's not very common, I guess. No. And then I then I made a tremendous, tremendous mistake. I <laughs> was uh, like earlier in the week, I was like uh, – Early in the week, I wasn't having a. Funny. I made a tremendous mistake. <laughs> Early in the week, I wasn't having a great day. I was kind of having a panic attack, and I was trying to like just chill the fuck out. So I was like, you know, what would probably be good for this. Let's watch a movie about the world ending. So I started watching that Greenland movie with Gerard Butt Cheeks, really and I made it about. I made it about. It's on. It's on HBO Max right is. now. I'm not familiar. Um, I, I thought you were going to say you watched Gaspar Noe's Climax. I was having a panic attack, so I watched the most anxiety-ridden film ever made. I love how um, like, you're coding your uh, cry for help in, like, movie <laughs> fucking watching. Like, oh, no, 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 no. It's all good. My, my cries for help are very vocal. I'm, it's, I'm working on it. But the, um, I'm here to help you, buddy. Thank you. Um, I, but, I'll calm you down. I'll jerk you off. I'll do whatever you need. Kiss uh, you on thank the you. Back. Well, man, I got to have more panic attack. I don't know. Um, it's like jerking him off and just wind him up more. Yeah, that's like, no, you gotta wind be, me up like, until it doesn't. Right? <laughs> you really got to work at it, though. That's the problem. And then I'll reflect on it. Then my Catholic guilt will come back for more panic. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> like trying so, to start a fucking lawnmower that you left in the garage and gassing it all year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a guy sounds like uh, 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 I sound like I sound like a a flooded Husqvarna. That's how I sound. So anyway, uh, Greenland. I'll probably go back and I'll try and watch the rest of it. But it's your basic disaster movie premise where um, everyone's like, "Hey, this meteor is going to fly by Earth. Maybe let's go check out the the light show." And then they all got it wrong, and now it's like. It's we're two days. It fucks a bunch of shit up, and we're two days away from an extinction level event. And then 
Gerard Butler and his family are alerted by their television that the president wants them to come to his special hideout in presumably Greenland. But then their kid, like as far as I made it was they got to the air base and everyone's society's falling to pieces. And then they kick their kid out because the kid's son's got uh, diabetes and then they're off to fend for themselves. And I just what? couldn't, yeah, I just couldn't, it was just too, it was like too much society falling apart all at once. It was too much like, like 10, I don't know. It was, I was not in a good headspace to watch it. So I'll go back to it. But I was like, ah, I needed something a lot more chill right what? now. What do you mean too much society falling apart? Like, like, like so it was too much for you or unbelievable how fast it happened? Uh, both, both. No, actually, no, like, take it back. No, bro, no. Society it was not, it was not unbelievable. Right now. No, it There's was no too, asteroids. right, right. I guess that's my point. It was too, it was too much for me to deal with because the very thin veil of humanity that we're just barely like, like holding on to, uh, was ripped back immediately and just like, looting and yelling and screaming and like people like like there was like uh, like this really tough I don't know I could there was a really tough scene where like fucking they're having a party right so spoiler alert for the first 15 minutes of fucking Greenland um (laughs) they're having a party at Gerard Butler's house and just I guess just because it just happens to coincide with this event and during the party they get the alert that oh you've been selected to be saved. And he's like surrounded by all his like friends and like their kids. And they're like, wait, we didn't get selected to get saved. So these guys like drive through his neighborhood with like other people pleading for them to take their kids like and like, idea. like that's, screaming that's and crying. Like it was, it was fucking, it was heavy. It sounds, it was heavy. sounds like a deep impact. Kind of. It's like deep impact. It, it, it's yeah, I guess that's true. Because deep impact spends a lot of time on earth where Armageddon spends a lot of time in, uh, with Bruce Willis on a on a rock, um, but yeah, I, I'll go back to check out Greenland. It's on HBO Max. I saw the trailers look pretty rad. I like Gerard Butler. It's got um, do you? I do. I think I've, I've liked him in. I like Three Hundred. Yeah. I feel like I liked. Oh, I liked Rock and Roller. That's it. Uh, Those are the yeah. two. I feel like I didn't yeah. hate Gamer, but I might have to go back to it. Every time I think I like Gerard Butler in something, it turns out it was Clive Owen the whole time. That's right. I almost said shoot him up. It's like, I like uh, shoot yeah, him I, up. I was like, shoot him up, children of men. Children well, of I, men. I, I like Clive Owen. Clive yeah, Owen. I love Clive Owen, it turns out. The Nick. I think The um, Nick is on HBO Max, by the way. Everybody go watch it. It's great. Yeah. It's one the of the best also, no one saw. The movie also has what's uh, that 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 lovely lady that played Deadpool's girlfriend who uh, Ooh, whose name uh, escapes me Monica Bacarin yes yeah, is that is that, is that you said yeah she's, she is hot yeah but yeah I'm I'm gonna go back to that and I will also I will also invest the whatever 2048 minutes it takes to watch uh, Michael Caine's The Swarm because watch, I just need to know watch that Gogs don't watch that and watch Man from Nowhere it'll be a much more I I want to know what your thoughts on it are and it'll be a much more entertaining watch. Okie dokie. But yeah, that's all that's all I did. I just watched little bits of things. All right. Well let's get this is, this is gonna be like a funeral dredge. Let's get into oh. our feature presentation. Yeah. Well here, I'll do the synopsis. Sure. Please go do. ahead, Alec. Okay. Michael Caine watches some porn. <laughs> yeah. And with he a room full of guys. Talks, okay, stop. You gotta you you gotta let me do this. All right. No interruptions. Oh. He watches porn with a bunch of guys. He gets on the train for 15 minutes real time yeah. to <laughs> North Britain. <laughs> he talks to a bunch of different British people, sexual harasses some women, maybe rapes some women, kills some dudes, but not like in fun ways. No. Um, there's a lot of boring Cockney British talking that I could bear. It's like incomprehensible. Like I needed subtitles, honestly. Um, and then he gets shot in the head, and yeah. that's about it. That's that him getting shot in the head is the only like shocking thing in this movie. I don't know if it's the only shocking thing. He like he kills that he puts that woman in his trunk, and then they just throw it over the into the water. It's well, like, he like they no sell that because he just doesn't give a shit. Well, that's yeah, the, that's he, my he, biggest, he didn't even do it. That's my biggest problem with this movie is is that his character. It, it, like so, the whole reason he goes to Lower London or whatever the Alex said, Lower London. London. Oh, what is, 
Lower Unkton from uh, yeah, Unkton from uh, Mary. Upper Mel. Unkton and Lower Unkton. That was a great. That was a great uh, two part episode of Mary. Hey, I, PJ, I don't want to stop you. And I don't want to bury the lead, but this movie fucking sucks. It does. It's very bad. Um, it does. But, but no, the whole reason he goes to Lower Unkton is because his brother dies, and he needs to. He's like trying to avenge his death. But then, like, the movie just, it's just him talking to people the whole time, and, like... Or not. Like, there's whole scenes where he just shows up, and then nothing transpires, and he leaves. This movie, like, we talk a lot about movie. I mean, obviously, like, you know, I I use it too much because Sean says it all the time, but in media res, that's a great, it's a great thing in film when it works. This movie just starts out with five guys watching, like, porn... A porn slideshow. Slideshow. And, and they're, well, yeah, it's, like, it's like the 60s, so that's probably, that's all I had, you know? Well, no, they had real porn because it shows up later. What are you talking about? The, yeah. the scene, the whole reason that everyone gets bent out of shape. Yeah, but that, like, how many, like, it's probably a lot easier to have a fucking slide projector in there in your living room than a goddamn reel-to-reel. I mean. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. So, they're watching slide porn. There's some hot chick mm-hmm. on the couch. And then they're just casually talking about his brother being murdered. And then he gets on the train for half an hour and he finishes his book. And it's like, it, it goes to a bar, yells at a woman. I'm surprised. The only thing that I, that I did appreciate about this movie is the misogyny. It's very like, Oh, it's thick. It's a horny movie full of misogyny. It is crazy. <laughs> um, he just meets random people and talks to them. There's one scene where he meets the guy who eventually is the villain, which you had knew he was the villain because they spent so much time with him and he looks so fucking villainous. But the first time you meet him, that scene just goes on and on and on and on and nothing happens. Some woman is talking to him about some guy. She's like, did you know Steve? And Mike yeah. is like, what? This and she's movie. like, Steve, did you know Steve? And he's like, yeah. I that know. scene is like impenetrable. Like, <laughs> I know like, you... And like, everything bro, is no. everything is at the same level. Like the, 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 whole, the dialogue. The, Go ahead, Sean. Sorry. The whole movie is like if you're if you're on vacation somewhere and you talk to somebody, it's like, hey, I'm from Baltimore, and it's like, oh, me too. Do you know so and so? Do you know such and such restaurant? Oh, do you know this guy? Like that's the whole fucking movie. It's all like, do you know Bill? Yeah, Bill's great. Oh, Bill's my brother. Bill's this. I'm still working at Caldor or whatever the fuck. Like it is impossible. I thought that the movie would be – so there's that scene – so he he blackjacks a guy with a log, and then I guess he throws him in a pond to die. And then instead of like – he decides to just, you know, he failed on his stealth roll, and he just runs up the yard <laughs> and That's just ends hilarious. up like, what the end fuck up in the middle of a that? poker game. Like, why didn't he just knock on the door? Yeah, what was it? He, like, acts like he's going to stealth – and he gets the one guy, and then he just runs up the side of the fucking like, But then he just gets introduced into the room, and then he just sits there. He doesn't engage with supposedly the one person he was supposed to talk to. He has this, in like, this, this like, night, like 2000s bar Baltimore-esque conversation with this girl who's just, like, saying, I know so-and-so. Like, he's like, I, I've been to Miami. Well, like, like, who I, gives a shit? I don't know. I don't know what the term would be, like, the filmic term would be. But, like... In scenes like that, usually the audio will focus on one conversation. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if the audience is like, I mean, we've, there's plenty of scenes where there is a crowded room, but you focus yeah, in on. See every Jim Jarmusch movie. I, yeah. I know what you're about to say. It's like they shot the movie with an onboard microphone for the camera, there's no like directional. Yeah, and, and the thing they, is, they weren't mic'd up. Those no. two. I, I don't, I guess, the, and the problem is, is that I don't understand what I'm supposed to be paying attention to, because the guy that's, like, the crime boss is, like, ripping off the other guy in the poker game, but then this chick is telling Michael Caine, like, do you know Sully? I know Sully. Like, it's like, what am I supposed to be focusing on? Well, don't Sully. Michael Caine. <laughs> the whole time Michael Caine's sitting there going. He's not from Boston. I don't know why I said Sully. <laughs> hey, do it for the movie, Sully. Um, so. Before I forget, I'm not, like, real well-versed on your people's history, but we're – People still using chamber pots in 1978. Like, was that a thing where you would just like reach under the? Bed I'm gonna, and, I'm gonna gar- I'm gonna say that if you, if you, probably were in the, there, if you're in yeah. London or Uncton, and your house was old enough to not have indoor plumbing, maybe. But yeah, it was yeah. weird that it was there, right? Maybe because just for when when Jenkins. they had the toilet when they were in the bathroom, like the public bathroom, they still had like the 
the water closet, like the tank of both. I mean, this is this is 1971. This movie came out so late 60s. Yeah, pro, I could see that. Well, yeah, they're only 50, 50 20 years post war. Yeah, I yeah. could see that. So, but there's there's so many weird things. Like, there's a scene where Michael Caine is like fucking his boss's girlfriend, who is, by the way, the hottest girl in this movie. Um, well, he's not. He's, he's he's phone fucking her while no, staring he, at his landlady. He's actually, fucking her. No, he is not. No, he is. No, he's not. He is. That's the whole thing at the end of the movie. They're like talking about. We know you're cheating on him with other guys. Like he's fucking her. He's just calling her and also like voice fucking her at the same time. He oh. didn't. He, he fucked her before the event. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Never, you never see that. No, 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 no. Oh, that's but, what I was trying to get at. But yeah, no. There's a scene where he calls her. And, like, he's like, hey, what are you doing? Like, uh, play with yourself. And then his landlord, or, like, whatever you want to call her, is, like, there. And she's, like, aggressively rocking in a rocking chair while he's, like, presumably, like, rubbing one out. It's the weirdest fucking I, I don't like sexual Michael Caine. Like, I don't want to. It's like, I don't want to hear. I don't want to he... hear that. As far as I'm concerned, Michael Caine's produced or reproduced by mitosis or something like i don't like the idea of him synthesis <laughs> yeah just sitting there it's like i don't know it's like it's super it's it's like hearing your high school guidance counselor like, like trying why, to get off on the phone like it's just why like, is he doing this in front of that other lady footing. and then the, it's a he, power move he, I think? he ends up fucking that lady that too, is right? correct oh, that he like that? he rips her shirt Hold open on. he rips no, he's on. like you wear purple underwear or <laughs> something or rips her shirt open yeah. And she's and like, then, what does that mean? He's like, you know what that means. <laughs> but then when he's like, he's sexing her on the bed, it's like, when Joyless. you would like, when, yeah, it's not like, there's no movement. It's like, well, it's they are like a kid, like pretending to have a sex on the bed just so the bed would make the noise. To like he's just like bouncing himself back and forth. That's probably what real British sex looks like. To <laughs> A lot of pardons, Cheerio. a lot of excuse Cheerio. me. Yeah, excuse yeah. me. Well, Sean, what was yeah. your question? My question is, like, not what's our opinion, but I guess, like, diegetically in the movie, is the woman, the hotel owner or whatever, is she supposed to be attractive? Like, I can't tell if in the movie she is supposed to be attractive or I not. I think she <laughs> was once, and she's just getting one thrown at also, her. Also, she's not even a hotel manager. That's, like, her house. Like, it's really weird. But it has a neon sign with the name of the hotel. Oh, is that right? It's I... called the Las Vegas, yeah. Oh, I missed that. Because at one he... point it, she says it's her house. It's really And there's neighbors? Like, what? It, it, the movie is very odd. Like And, like, he's getting, like, called back to... Lower London or wherever else from like there's scenes that just don't make it's him just introducing himself and then leaving without having a substantial conversation. There's like we were saying before the show started. There's there's like the this whole slow burn right for the first you're trying to put two, the whole two movie together. Is a slow burn. No, 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 let me get let me get to this thing. Like, sure, so sure, you're, sure, you're sure. watching the whole thing and you're like okay. You sort of find out, okay, so his brother is dead. Okay, how did his brother die? His car went into the – okay, so maybe he was drunk. They say he's drunk, but he's not drunk, whatever. And then it's sort of – the confessions come out, and then there's a stabbing, and then there's a, then there's a kidnapping, and then there is a guy getting yeeted off a roof. I'm like, okay, we're, we've hit the third. The third act is just going to be Rampage, and it's not. Like it just – it like there's like this little glimpse of hope for like five consecutive minutes – of finally, here's the payoff for all this, and then, then it's just it's just doo doo. Like I, I don't understand why this movie got remade. Yeah, um, I, I don't understand why this movie is rated so high. Like this movie's got like it, it's like an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes. I was uh, I think it's like one of those movies that nobody wants to be the one that says it's bad because they don't get it. Yeah. It's well, there's bad. nothing to get. It's just bad. Was it shocking in its time or something? Was I mean, it, like... it is. It is. It is violent to a point, I guess. And like uh, one thing that I didn't like about the movie at all, and I guess maybe this could be uh, just shocking to people, is that Carter, uh, Michael Caine, his his motivations are all over the place, and he just turns on a dime and becomes this like serial killer, and it's just like well, I think it's implied he always was, right? Like, but like he I, okay, but it's like very like it doesn't feel I don't know it just it's just 
all over the place to me. Well, here, but... Here's the other thing I don't understand. Like, so what you ultimately find out through like some sort of weird, just twist of circumstance, it right? It turns like, into fucking eight millimeter. Right. Like, so he goes and he's banging the one goofy chick who's banging the two rival crime Lords of the town. Yeah. <laughs> right. So she's like the linchpin of this whole thing. And after he just throws one at her, he just happens to flip the switch on her little, like yeah, projector reel to reel. Yeah. And he finds out that his niece, uh, sweet D was in some she other didn't look like sweet D. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like she was sort of in a porno. And then, so here's the part that I don't get. And maybe it's just cause I didn't understand the time, the country or both mm-hmm. was what was that movie illegal? Was it illegally made? Was his, was his niece underage? Like what was the linchpin of needing to go to the cops about this? I if think nothing thought, was, I, I thought she was underage. I thought it was, that's what I thought. It was illegal. Yeah. I thought she was like coerced, like with drugs is what I yeah. thought. But I think that I, I gathered that from the synopsis, not from the movie itself. Okay. Cause I couldn't figure out whether either. Cause he, he's like, I'm going to report you to the police. And I'm like, I don't get to what end though. Like, where's the illegality? I, I didn't know if she was like, cause I thought she was talking, they're talking about her like studying at university. So I thought she was like, I just couldn't put, I couldn't put two and two together about where the, yeah, where the I, crime happened. I think Sean's right. I think they 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 don't do a very good job at doing this, but I think that they try to say that she was drugged and they basically like raped her and put it on film, more right. or so, less. So then, so then he but sends then the, it to the vice. He sends it to the vice city, and then. But then the brother, the brother, Michael Caine's brother, found out about it and then like tried to go after him, and that's why he got murdered. So the well, brother then, and the brother found out because the restaurant slash arcade owner tipped him off because he's sleeping with the one broad. And then like the, well, the brother's girl, girlfriend, who's like maybe a prostitute, she gets, the she was part of the thing too. Niece, right. Isn't the girl like Frank's daughter? It's Frank's, it's Frank's daughter. It's Carter's niece. Yeah. But then somebody at some point, Oh, the guy from, um, the guy from Braveheart, um, that's was, where he's from. I could was like yelling at something about you are a scumbag. He said he didn't even know if it was his daughter or that you banged his wife or something. So maybe it's also implied that it could be Carter's daughter. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, I think you're right. I was uh, I was telling TJ like I this is a movie like I almost didn't finish. I had to pick up with like 22 minutes left. I uh, I felt. I'm, I'm sorry, Sean. Sorry. Go no, ahead. go ahead. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, and I was like, well, there's no way this is the, you know, the end. There's no way it can get any more boring. I'll just power through it. Literally two seconds later, I'm watching motherfuckers reading bingo for like five minutes. And I was like, it reminds this is gonna be a weird reference. But uh, Clint Eastwood directed a movie called Play Misty for me with Jessica Walter. It's like his yeah. first movie he directed. Yeah. And there's a scene where they just go to like the Newport Jazz Festival and yeah. just shoot B-roll. And it's all in the movie. Yeah, it's no like, dialogue. It's like 15 minutes long. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. And that's what this there's tons of that in this. Yeah, I uh, I felt I checked out of this movie so hard. Like I had a hard time finishing this movie. Like I, it, I, it made me question. Like in the late, in the late sixties, uh, early seventies, were people just happy to see people like moving on screen? How was this compelling? This was so fucking boring. And like, it looked like shit, and it sounded like shit. It was so yeah. poorly mixed. Like it was so poorly mixed. And even when they had action beats or whatever, like it's all like. It, it's almost like part of an armistice disagreement. They couldn't have like stunts in British movies. They yeah. fucking, it's all like shot reverse shot or it happens off scene or it is like the literally the worst stabbing I've ever seen in a motion picture. That one guy, the one guy he stabs like towards the end. It's fucking hilarious. He like stabs him once like in the side and then he just like heals over and dies. It's just like, uh, like, like that being polite. That whole end chase. Oh him, god! Like, running the guy down on the beach and like through like the the coal mines, maybe so they were just dumping like, coal would... in the ocean yeah, or whatever what the fuck that? they were doing. What the hell was going on there? If I want to see dopey white guys like run around and get out of breath, not doing anything, like I'll just jog around the neighborhood. Also, like... Michael Caine is the reason why people have uh, riders in their uh, in their contracts that they they shouldn't run because Michael Caine looks ridiculous running. He's got this like. He's got this crazy, like, Kermit the Frog gate, like, running around. <laughs> well, it didn't help that he was carrying a double-barreled shotgun. That is him. true. That is true. 
And then and then he gets shot at the end, and it's like, for what? Like, who cares? Like, I don't even give a shit. Like, I this movie is so fucking boring. I, I Sean said it. Uh, I believe Sean said it in a text. But this felt like Lay Samurai. This felt so much like Lay Samurai to me, where it's like it's supposed to be this like classic, and then you watch it, and it is just like the most boring fucking thing. And you know what? Like, here's the thing, right? Like, I I I, I like slow plotting films. You know, I, I it's not like I'm averse to the classics. Like, I'm not a guy that's like, oh, everything's got to be like blood and guts and like high high octane, super fast. But this shit is just boring. There's nothing there's nothing to sink your teeth into in this movie. Like, what are you supposed to be compelled by? I don't know. You know? Yeah, God, you uh you missed the samurai, right? You probably had some kind of like meeting on the movie. Wouldn't or say he missed it. Yeah, yeah, I did not I did not see Le Samurai. It's that was a like, God's dark period where he missed like eighty percent of the shows for like six months. Nah, I, mean, I think he was the smarter one. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Well, that that just like this. It's just a bunch of people mumbling, but everybody has a cool coat. So I guess that's what makes it good. <laughs> At least in this, there's some guns. Yeah. At least yeah. Samurai, there, there was just talking. <laughs> well, there's barely talking. any guns in this thing. There's even the shootout in this thing is boring. Like he like tells the dude climbs on top of the ferry. He's like, stop right there. And instead of the guy ducking or moving away. Or yeah. anything else, he just keeps going, no, and then he gets shot. Yeah. It's like, all right. It's fucking stupid. It's damn, stupid. Michael Caine's wife is used to be fucking hot. God damn. I don't doubt that. Uh, I mean, and good for him. They've been together since 1947. No, that can't be right. Did you see Did you see Get Carter? No, but I saw the wife it bought. <laughs> Uh, I don't. Do we have anything else to add to this before we get into our five knuckle shuffles? I I cannot believe how long that train ride at the beginning of the movie lasted. <laughs> it was so long. He read like, a whole book. Like I, it, it, time. <laughs> it lasted. It was six minutes of real time. It's like a, I timed it. I timed where it ended versus where he left the 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 porn watching fellows or whatever. Did uh, Alec? Did you ever see Birdemic Shock and Terror? No. It opens the same exact way. They drive from like their house to somewhere else in real time and like stop for gas and shit. It's like insane. How how old was Michael <laughs> Caine in this movie? Because I was like, I couldn't figure. I I couldn't figure out. If, I, I'm about to look it up. This was 71. Oh, yeah. He's born in 33. So he was he wasn't 40 yet. 38. He still looked. Oh, he looked like an old. He, I could. I, he, I was like, he could be thirty-five. He could be fifty. I have no idea how old he is right now. Has he ever looked young? I don't know. I, I don't know. Kind of young. I like. I, I, I mean, he looked young compared to like the other stuff we watched him in this month. I kind of liked his like his hair. He had that like curly like sideburn look. I thought that was pretty rad. His hair was one of my favorite parts of his performance. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know what he right. kind of like, like? He was like, he reminded me of. It's like if you took um, Colin Firth's character from Kingsman and made it super fucking boring. Like, that's what I was watching. He did look very similar to him, very like lean with that amazing uh, tailored suit. Yeah, and he kind of carried, yeah. carried the same attitude, but he didn't like it just. It... <laughs> he only killed like five people. Right. Yeah. Well, and one woman. <laughs> he threw in a chair. Yeah, he yeah. killed two women. He OD'd oh, that yeah, one. He OD'd that one chick. <laughs> yeah. I, that, that, that was such a weird, like, I know why they did it, like, from a technical standpoint. But he's like, leave your pants on. It's yeah. like, why? Yeah. <laughs> well, he like, he, like, lays her on the ground. And he, like, mounts. I thought he was going to TF her. I was like, what's the plan <laughs> here? Like, to <laughs> death. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I want to go. Uh, all right. Five knuckle shuffle time. Uh, Alec. Uh, one. Like this is <laughs> this is this is worse than Jaws four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like Jaws four, at least I laughed at how awful it was at times. This was just boring. Like this movie is an hour and fifty one minutes, and I watched an hour and thirty eight minutes of it because I had to fast forward some because I could not. <laughs> I could not. 
just I just couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. Like I fast forwarded. I did not see where he put the woman in the trunk. I saw the car go over, and then reading the recap on Wikipedia, discerned that the woman was in the trunk. Well, I I said it. Before, they call that the boot. I said it before. Oh, the we, boot. I said it before we started recording. But this is the movie where. If you've never seen this movie or you have seen this movie, you have the exact amount of knowledge because there's no way anyone watching this movie is going to remember anything about it in a week after you saw it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh, this happened and this happened. Yeah, you're probably right. Sure, whatever. Yeah, I uh, actually watched another movie on my phone through part of this movie because it just <laughs> was, I couldn't uh... fucking deal with it. Yeah, yeah, I get what that. Like, why was like did Stallone like love this movie so much for some reason that he was like I gotta remake this? this really like, having a hard time not picking the the remake. It's, it's a movie. it's like a classic. Like I know people a love this classic. Movie. Yeah, this is. I want to go back now. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with uh, Criminal, the uh, Ed Burbaker, Sean yeah. Phillips like neo noir comic book series. The anthology you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in the back of those comics, he always does like these retrospectives on different film noir from all from over the years, and he has he has a big write up on Git Carter. And now I want to go back and read it and be like, okay, why don't I like this movie? Because I I trust your opinion, Ed Burbaker. You're an incredible writer. Maybe it's different because he's like British or Scottish or something, isn't he? No, he's from like Chicago, I think. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm not sure. <laughs> I was gonna say maybe it's because they didn't have good movies over there. He's also <laughs> he, Ed Burbaker is also like our age. Like he might be a little older than us, but he's like our he's around our age. So I just yeah. I just I, I just like looking Which at fucks Wikipedia. Me up he's been such a fucking ama- he's done such amazing work, and I've done nothing in my whole life. So one of the things that Wikipedia is saying in the late sixties, right? So a relaxation in film censorship, censorship produced sure. an increase in dark, uncompromising films. Yeah, the like, made directors uh, like, pushing the boundaries. Get Carter was one of the first ones. So this yeah, was like, kind of like the first one out of the gate. Yeah, like John Cassavetes like, movies. Yeah, like, you want to uh, see a, a good British Sam Peckinball movie. movies? Watch uh, the Long Good Friday with Bob Hoskins. Fantastic movie. I yeah. love that movie. That's a great movie. But I mean, I mean, that might sort of explain some of the some of the reason it's it's held in have, some degree yeah, of it, esteem. It, it does. It feels like an exploitation movie without all the shit that makes exploitation movies cool. Yeah. Right. Have we have we done a noir month? No. I thought we did. Didn't we? Do we have a November this year? A November theme. Um, I think I in think November. So. I, I, I we can do noir November. Noir November, and we could that do we could do classic noir and neo noir. So that that leaves it wide open. You can pick whatever. Well, the I, I I I take that back. We did potentially have on deck uh, Kevin Cost November. <laughs> that is pretty good. Ah <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, well, we'll come up. We'll, we'll have to make that decision when it gets closer. But... September noir. Yeah, October noir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, yeah, that's good. All right, keep going. Who, at this point, who gives a shit? We did <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. We this. this is episode two hundred and seventy-four. Like, we're fuck. gonna run. We're gonna run out of months. Nope, we're never gonna run out of months. We're that clever. As long as Sylvester we don't run out Stalanguary. of actors, we won't yeah. run out of months. Yeah. We, can, we can always have Sylvester Stallone too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, keep going. Who's next? Um, Sean. I'm going to dust this off. I haven't done this in a while. It's a zero. Like, just because because of the pedigree of the movie versus what it actually is. I had never heard of this movie, and it was just, like, John's untitled crime movie. It's like, I don't know, it's like a two. But, like, I expected a lot from this movie, and I was powerful bored. Yeah, Like, legit, I watched the last ten minutes of Police Story again, a movie I had just watched on my phone (laughs) while this was on, while they were doing those, like, uh... Those Black Belt Jones 2-esque fuck match cuts that they kept doing. <laughs> yeah. Like, we didn't talk about the, like, insane editing in this movie, but, like, the the match cuts are all over the place, and they are prevalent. But it's like, I'm with Alec, man. It is fucking unwatchable. I told you know TJ else, before. Uh, I'm sorry. Correct? I just thought no, about no. this. I, did you know what else this guy directed? What? Uh, Flash Gordon. Uh, oh, okay. man. Yeah, right? Way more watchable. Interesting. So weird. Anyway, sorry, like. Sean. Flash Gordon's not good either, but like at least yeah. it's entertaining and like yeah. wild. Like yeah, that, I, la- 
I, I told TJ that last 20 minutes, I almost just didn't watch it and just wait for hopefully one of you guys had finished the movie and I could just pretend like I saw the ending of it. <laughs> we, we all shouldn't have finished it. <laughs> <laughs> like we should, we should have broke this up and just watched it in fourths. And <laughs> we should do that. We should do that one. That's more. not a bad idea. <laughs> Oh fuck! Sean, that was the first. That was the first twenty-eight well, I, minutes. I feel like started. we missed an opportunity. If we were going to do it, this would have been the fucking movie. Oh my god! The problem is, we'll never know until we finish the movie. That is that is very yeah. true. Yeah. See if we can stitch it together. But like, we'd have to make a pact to literally not watch any of the rest of the movie. Yeah. Oh, well, that would be a problem. If one of us, if if one of us starts the movie. Like at the beginning of the week, send out like an emergency text. Like this is <laughs> this is the one. I would have literally had a, I, if we we broke it up this way. I would have had a fucking countdown clock up. Yeah, the seriously, I, if you would have told, it would have made it worse if I knew I only had to watch twenty eight minutes of it because it would have been like just a miserable twenty eight minutes. If I, you like, had the middle twenty eight, it'd be like, what am I? The dealing whole movie with? is the middle twenty eight. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? This is this movie is yeah. all second act, and yeah. that's the worst kind of movie. Like, uh, gobbles. Um, it's a two, two, two tits. Two tits. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I gotta itty, st- bitty, I, shitty, pretty titty. Yeah, I gotta stick with you know. I gotta go. I gotta stay consistent if nothing else. Like I, like this movie. T- to Sean's point, um, it it uh, it's from what I from what I expected from like the sort of the hype and the mystique, right? And then in sort of a, a prayer before dawn esque. Like How flip dare bet- you between between what the poster shows you and what the movie shows you? Dogs, you act like there was zero kickboxing in a prayer before dawn. <laughs> like it was like you know what? like, like, like so you get started, like look at the look at the hear me out, hear me the fuck out, hear me the fuck out, right? A prayer before dawn shows a kickboxing guy getting ready to get it on, and the rest of the movie there's a little bit of kickboxing, and then it's a lot of. Uh, uh, of sex with transgendered people and heroin. Oh, now, I forgot you were a turf. The po- <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I forgot about turf dogs. <laughs> right. I'm not saying there's a problem. Just what I'm yeah. saying is, I get think, Carter I, I, shows I was true scum gogs. Get, get Carter shows Mr. Carter. The poster shows him holding a pump shotgun that he never uses the entire film. Yeah. Like, he, also, he there's hits nothing. the guy with it. That's about no, it. it's a double barrel. Like, there's nothing. That scene doesn't yeah, even exist he, in the movie. He's, he's got the lock stock rifle. Yeah. yeah so, I wonder if that's why they use I don't the, know. Probably. Yeah. Real quick, though. I like. I'm not like an expert on female masturbation, but do women normally masturbate by gently cupping their own breast? Is that like a thing? I think it all it all depends on what turns you on, baby. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. That's what I do. But like, you you see the poster for Get Carter, and you expect it to be like like this sort of hard boiled esque. But it's gonna be like this like negotiations in a barrel of a gun revenge yeah, flick. You, you expect it to be like that movie Harry Brown. Remember that movie he did like way later? Oh, that's like that's, got a similar uh, setup. That's what I'm. Yeah. Gonna, that's my pick. Oh. That's how I'm gonna like, the next week. But like right. you, I mean, you expect it to be like I expected it to be some sort of like rampage movie. What's the like the? It's not called rampage. What's the Mel Gibson one? Um, payback. Payback. You expect yeah, that. payback slaps. Well, payback right. like, also like a neo noir. So that uh, that's a very. Is that also uh, like a fucking? Um... It's based off the Parker books. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. so. But the, so that's the other thing, right? This is based off a book, and maybe that's but, why it sucks. I think <laughs> books are terrible. <laughs> but um, like, like you, books I, are you, terrible. I expected hard it to agree. be. I really did expect it to be like, okay, dude's gonna come to town. And like, I expect the movie to open with like doors getting kicked in and just like people getting got on his like hunt for revenge and information, and then it would sort of piece it. So I didn't expect him to just keep getting pints of bitter and then just not having complete conversations. Like, well, there's also that that scene from uh, that rock and roll directly lifts in the parking garage when he's doing the, his fucking. Ar- we talking about how arcades work for 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And, and all it was is like, man, I wish I was watching a guy any Guy Ritchie movie, even fucking King Arthur. Like, give me like, something. Even the thing though, like Guy Ritchie clearly likes this movie. Like yeah. that right. rock and roll is lifted. And now that you mentioned the double barrel. I wonder. I bet you that's a nod in Lockstock to this fucking movie. Like it yeah, makes sense, right? It's crazy. It's crazy that like again. Well, 
Every like, one of those... in his review, everyone loves this movie. This is Bro, like, every one of every lead character in Jason Statham or in a uh, fucking Guy Ritchie movies is Carter, Jason Statham, and Snatch. Fucking yeah. um, uh, fucking uh, uh, why can't I think of his name? Archie. Well, he's not the lead character, but Archie in fucking Rock and Roll. Like, uh, well, Jason Statham in Lockstock. Like, it's it's yeah. all that archetype. Yeah, true, true. But it's yeah, it's just. Maybe he's just like, oh, well, the bar set super low. I can do this. But anyway, it's yeah, it's just not it's just it's not good. So I don't maybe and maybe it's a product of its time. Maybe it was revolutionary. It's time. Maybe we're looking at it through the wrong lens. But in 2021, uh, 1971's Get Carter, a film that is 50 years old, is not good. TJ. Yeah. Uh, it gets a two just for the tits. It's got a lot of tits. And you know what? I disagree with all you guys, like, uh, ragging on the, uh, the, the smart. I didn't tits. rag on them. I liked them. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought, uh, a, f- a few of these ladies were very attractive. A uh, big fan. Uh, I hated this movie, like, a lot. <laughs> and I, uh, I think it's funny, right? Cause, like, Gogs, you just said, like, well, maybe we're not looking at it in the right, you know, time frame. And that's a, or, or you know, the right point of view because of where we are and where movies are. Like I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I mean, like I like a lot of old movies. One of my favorite movies, Citizen Kane. That movie came out in 1942, and that movie is way more watchable. This, than this. movie feels like it came out in 1922. Yeah, like, and like, <laughs> maybe it's not fair to compare, like arguably one of the best movies ever made to this. But like, my point is, is that a great movie is timeless, and like you can. You know, I mean, we've watched plenty of older films. I mean, 2001 it, came out in, what, 64? Yeah, 64. came out in 2001. <laughs> 60, ah, nailed 60, it. 64, 63, something like that. But yeah. that movie's incredibly watchable. You know what I mean? Like, this movie is just so fucking boring. And again, like, I just, just by virtue of how this movie is edited together and, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to, like, I don't know who I'm supposed to root for. I don't know what I'm outcome I'm supposed to be looking for. Also, we didn't even touch on the fact that, like, it, uh, uh, fucking uh, Carter's brother is stuffed into, like, a baby coffin that's in his, like, hotel room or something. It's very weird. Like, that whole thing is, just, like, strange as shit. Like, I wrote that off as, like, just that's some sort of cultural, this is what <laughs> they must do. You stuff them in baby coffins and they're just like, here. He was, he was just a tiny man and they just well, put him just, in his house. It, it was some that shit. Was that a baby, baby coffin. That was just a coffin. That's what coffins look like. That they're that little, they're just little yeah, tiny. Yeah, coffins, things. coffins just barely fit you. Caskets are the big ones. Oh, they're like padded, oh, and a yeah. like, coffin is just a coffin. Well, why was, me in, why the was it in that fucking house? Like it was, I don't know. Anyway, it that matter. I cannot explain. Well, it might just be what they. It might be how they mourn and just let you lay yeah, in maybe. state for a while until well, what your people would have been up. cool. Is if it, it was, was like Django down. and they just had a fucking Gatling gun in the coffin. That would be cool. Anything um, would be cool in this movie. <laughs> if nothing, anything happened, it would have been cool. Nothing is cool in this movie. It's like so like again, like I checked out of this movie so fucking hard. Like the only thing that perked me up was that weird phone call masturbation scene because it was so hilariously like With the fucking weird. horror music things. The yeah, do, do, and like do, do, you gotta do, understand, like, you can't see this at home, people. But like it was literally framed by this woman in a rocking chair going, eh, 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 and it's like I get it. It's like fucking. Like it's not like yeah. again, but it was like so stupid. Like what the fuck am I watching here? And like Michael Caine's like, can I call and fucking jerk off my girlfriend over the phone? She's like, yeah, sure. And like I'll just sit here and listen to it. It, it was like, what am I? What is going on here? Like I don't. Maybe it's one of those things like back. Well, no, I take it. I was. I immediately stopped what I was going to say. I was like, well, maybe they couldn't put a lot of, of fucking sex in this movie. But there's tons of sex in this fucking movie. So I don't know. Uh, it sucks. It's fucking boring. Everything about it is boring. The resolution of the story is fucking boring. Like it, the way it opens is fucking like I can't even describe it. It's just like the movie just starts. And it's a bunch of guys watching porn, and they're like, hey, look at that guy's dick. Hey, look at that guy's dick. Hey, Carter, your brother's dead. What do you think about that? Yeah, I guess I better go on this train for half an hour. See ya. Yeet. And it's just like, <laughs> I don't... Oh, it's fucking awful. It's Is it a more interesting movie? Well, anything's a more interesting movie, but would it be a much more interesting movie if, like, that that 
that hitman that gets introduced like in like the 3.5 act of this movie. The hitman like, he gets introduced he like should, what, ten, with 10 minutes in the left of the movie. Well, no, he's, would, no, would, would he's it be more actually introduced earlier. There's a scene because that ring is in the beginning at some point too. Oh, I, I missed that. Well, he's been be like better, following him. But would it be better if like, oh, was he following? I was going to say, it'd be, it'd be a more interesting movie if it's like Carter is being hunted by this hitman and he needs to clean up his business before the hitman catches up to yes. him. Yes. Yes. That would be way better. It would be way better if they started out like with the brother getting murdered, like anything, yeah. like anything dramatic instead yeah. of what they did. Like, yeah, it's it like, hey, we're coming if... to take you, take you to London. Well, I'm not going. OK, well, all right. Uh, you gonna put some. Pa- oh, you got a great sense of humor. OK, will this scene end already? <laughs> yeah, that, that oh, <laughs> it's like one of the first scenes off of the train. He's like in the bar. And yeah. I guess it's the woman he's fucking question mark that calls him. I can't remember. But he just like you don't hear the other end of the conversation. He's like, Yeah, what? Well, yeah, oh fuck you. No, I need you here. Yeah, fuck you. And then he hangs up the phone. Like, oh, I thought is- that was supposed to be code. I thought he was talking to some mob guy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I no, I thought he was talking I thought he was talking to his bro- like this is how silly this movie is. No one could figure out what he meant. I think I thought he was talking to Margaret, the the woman that was banging his brother that was like sort of like oh uh, okay like the sort of half like the half one in and bangs half out. at the end and throws in the trunk yeah no no, no the woman no, he bangs in and throws in the, the trunk the one, one. He, the one he tfs and like yeah and jack's full of heroin <laughs> that one uh, it sounds so much fun it sounds so much more entertaining when you describe it <laughs> he yeah. tfs her and throws her full of heroin <laughs> uh, this movie fucking sucks though i i it's terrible i i have no idea why it's so fucking lauded it's, it's it's one of those ones too like where i'm watching i'm like oh fuck if they like this movie i'm gonna feel like a real dickhead because this is like oh, no. terrible no, oh, no, no. i wanted i'm gonna be honest i wanted to like it like i, I want to like, like yeah. every movie i don't want to sit here and like, be miserable watching a movie you know what i mean it's like a, it's my time i i like uh, yeah, yeah i was telling tj it's like i'm starting to feel about these classic movies like uh classic american literature where it's like oh you got to read moby dick and you're like oh man this is fucking boring <laughs> like well, I don't know. There's a lot of gay gay stuff in Moby Dick. I, I it's not like explicit though. It's not it's, like it's not like if I wrote it. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah. Don't, don't give me subtext. Give me homo super text. Also, <laughs> the name of my band. <laughs> you, you want like you want Moby Dick written by Chuck Tingle? Yeah, yeah. Moby Dick up my butt. You want Moby's dick. pounded yeah. pounded in the ass by Moby Dick? Not like not Moby Moby though, because like oh, I don't think he's uh, yeah. a whole his, lot. No, his vegan dick. No, yeah. his fucking his sad like slightly yellowish dick. Oh god, that guy! Like he has like animal rights tattooed over on his neck and yeah. like vegan power up and down his arms. Like imagine yeah. what's tattooed around his balls. It's got to be like a nightmare. It's like, it, look, it's, it's, like, it's probably just a bunch of racial slurs. That yeah. would be funny. If he was like hardcore <laughs> vegan and racist, that's a good comment. Yeah, I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, in fact, veganism is like peak racism. Go go look it up. I don't have yeah. to w- woke scold you here, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm only half joking about that. Yeah. Uh, all right, next week, it's my pick, and I'm picking Harry Brown. Uh, it's an action Harry movie. Brown. It's an action movie that Sean just mentioned. Uh, I was I really wanted to pick Tenet or one of the other Christopher Nolan movies, but no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pick Harry Brown because it's it's a uh, it's oh, a Tubi. little it's a uh, yeah it's very it's like only a a little over an hour and a half long. Oh, it's not even that old. Yeah, it, no, it came, no, it came out before the like a lot of the Nolan stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're going to watch that. It's an old man revenge movie. It, it can't be that bad, right? We'll see. Uh, okay. Uh, anything, Cogs, anything you need to promote? <laughs> no, no, we're still waiting for COVID to reopen, so we'll just wait for COVID to know. reopen. What you want to start back up again? And, <laughs> start back up again, and then we'll run that shit back. Let's run it back. Yeah, uh, I did. I did have my first in the wild uh, experience with an anti-masker, and that was fun. Just, what? just like, oh, just like I was just in a shop getting like a. a pastry or some shit and some woman in line behind us was like she walked in with her and her daughter not wearing masks and one of the polite people behind the counter was like um ma'am could you please put on masks like 
I don't know if you understood this, but the mandate's been lifted. And I was like, mm. oh, God. Which she's right about, but she was a real <laughs> con about it. So. Shut up. <laughs> I've, I've gotten that like five times yeah, in the past two days. Just, Bro, l- let me let me tell you about trying to enforce mask guidelines in Central oh, can, Florida for a can, couple oh, minutes. Well, COVID didn't happen <laughs> in Central even, Florida. I can't even imagine it has not like, been I had, the most I had fun a, shit. <laughs> I had a guy. I had a guy today. Like he was just screaming at me, <sighs> like at the service desk about yeah. how how dare you think you know more than our government? I was like, of course I think I know more than the government, but it's not my yeah, policy. Yeah, have, have you seen our policy. president? Yeah, it's Harris like, policy. You goddamn goon. Well, I, I had the same thing. It's your, like, fucking, it's your fucking business. Like, yeah, you go somewhere like, else. They're like, oh, well, that's what he said. He's, he was like, I'm, I'm never shopping here again. I was like, well, have a good day. Yeah, Peace. I'm like, I told some lady the like, other day, I was like, look, thanks. ma'am, I'm not Johnny Target, heir to the fucking Target franchise. Oh, like, you know, if I would have, yeah. if I would have been thinking, I would have used <laughs> the line from a. Uh, from Tombstone, well, bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I, wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking that would have killed. This shit happened like 25 years ago, but I'll never forget when the guy, this guy, it's back when I worked at Babbage's, and this guy was like, he was all mad because we wouldn't accept his like trade in game that was all scratched to shit. This is in the PlayStation 1 era, so like a scratch on a disc was like a death sentence. Those things wouldn't yeah. play at all. But he's like, I'm going to talk to Mr. Babbage's. <laughs> And uh, just to let you know, Charles Babbage, not his name isn't Babbage's, Charles Babbage. <laughs> he's, the, died, he's the father of modern computing, yeah, he right? He died yeah. in like 1902. <laughs> so Dude, I, I was trying to fucking get gas over here the other day and uh, everybody was stocking up, even though that pipeline doesn't go to Florida at all. <laughs> and fucking, uh, I'm, uh, they see my uh, my out-of-state homo tags and this lady pulls up to me and they're like, oh, you're from Maryland? I was like, yeah, yeah, I live here though. And she's like, you know, if it wasn't for fucking Joe Biden, we wouldn't have. I was like, do you do I need to explain to you like the the senator from Citibank that your president is like the, yeah. one of the worst business criminals on? You know, yeah. have a good day, ma'am. Like I'm not yeah. gonna get into this. I'm not gonna attack this one from the left. Yeah, I'm just no, gonna leave it alone. It's not gonna do you any good. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, uh, all right, everybody. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck oh, everybody. Also, the other day, a lady came into the store with a whole ass iguana. Like on her <laughs> chest. Well, that's like kind of cool. Actually. Like a fucking, like a fucking emotional support iguana, like carrying that's it like a baby. It's kind of rad. Oh, yeah. was it Jub Jub? It was Jub Jub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jub Jub. That's kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. I don't mind that one. Uh, all right, everybody, that's the <laughs> show. Right. Go eat your own ass. And uh, yeah, okay, what does this button do? Raise hand. Hold on, I'm gonna hit that. No, doesn't do anything. No, it just says you it raise probably, your hand. Probably. It probably does in like meetings where everybody's muted. Oh, I think like it lets raising, me like it's like raising your hand like in class. It acknowledges that you want to be. Called All right, ladder bitches, ladder. Bye. Bye.